one more time uh, in order to introduce you now to a branch of knowledge called eschatology eschatology is a study of the end time and it is a branch of knowledge which could not be mastered until the modern age so we have no <laughs> we have no books we have no classes in Islamic eschatology no it could not be studied until this age and this is the age when things are happening when Pharaoh you know Pharaoh from Egypt was drowning the Quran tells us something about what happened underneath the water that he declared his faith in the one God of the Israelite people prior to this he was declaring I am the Lord most high <laughs> but when he was dying he recognized that he wasn't God I think the Japanese Emperor also recognized he wasn't God after the end of the Second World War perhaps so he declared his faith in the God of Banu Israel the Israelite people the Quran responded in the 10th chapter now the 10th chapter sort of to Yunus and will be down towards the end of the chapter where Allah says now Pharaoh now you're going to declare your faith and prior to this you were in a state of obstinate rejection rebellion and you were committing facade meaning oppressing the people today we have decided the God is the one God is speaking today we've decided to preserve your physical body that your physical body when it is discovered when it resurfaces in the historical process would be a sign a sign for a people who would come after you but most people are negligent of our signs this is the verse the body of Pharaoh was discovered in 1897 or 8 and the Zionist movement was created in the same year the same year and so when the Quran says that when the body of Pharaoh is discovered this is a sign for a people to come after you the answer is the Quran is referring to the Judeo-Christian Zionist Alliance what is that sign the sign is that the epic encounter between truth and falsehood between arrogant power and the world of the sacred between Pharaoh and Moses which took place at that time and which ended with a divine intervention in the historical process when Allah said to Moses alayhi salam take your rod and strike the water my gosh you'd love to see that video eh and the water parted and we parted the water and you were you were able to cross with safety and when Pharaoh and his army attempted to cross guess what happened the waters came down and they were drowned they died indicating from an eschatological viewpoint that history is going to end with a re-occurrence I wish I could find a better word of that epic encounter between truth and falsehood how will history end? when they put him on the cross and then they boasted we've killed him because there he is on the cross he is dead 
He claimed that he was the Messiah, the son of Mary. But he is dead. So he couldn't be the Messiah. <laughs> Why? The Messiah has to rule the world from Jerusalem. And truth and justice has to triumph over all rivals and all injustice and oppression. And so they boasted. What they did not know, was it no, says Allah in the Quran, they did not succeed in killing him. They did not succeed in crucifying him. Allah made it appear like that. Allah took his soul, took his soul, took his soul. I repeated it three times. And if Allah takes his soul, but he did not, he was not killed, he was not crucified. The implication is, like what happened to you last night? Last night, Allah took your soul and returned it. That's what the Quran speaks of. So Allah took the soul when he was on the cross. And so they thought he was dead. And Allah returned the soul when no one was there. And then raised him, so he didn't die. But you would know this unless you come to the Quran. But that's not the end of the story. Oh no. Surah An-Nisa in the next verse says, وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ None of them will escape. Who rejected the true Messiah. But rather, when he returns, before he dies, they will all have to believe in him. Every single one of them. So I was in a synagogue in, in New, New Jersey. And there were a few hundred Jews in the gathering. And I was speaking to them. And when I made mention of this, that when Jesus comes back, because he didn't die, all of you are going to have to believe in him as the true Messiah. When the lecture was over, they all surrounded me. And I am in the center. And they were demanding from me, not hostile, politely, but earnestly. Why should we have to believe in that which we have rejected? Why? Tell us why. Imagine me with a few hundred Jews all around me demanding an answer. The answer is at that moment when the divine intervention takes place, the veils are going to be removed and you'll be able to see the truth. And so history is going to end in this way. There has to be someone ruling the world from Jerusalem. But the prophet said that before that, there's going to be a false messiah. The false messiah was ruled from Jerusalem. And that is why they wanted the United States of America in this monetary system to become the ruling state. 